Yep. Hello, folks. Um, I've been putting this off and putting this off for a while, and I'm not even really sure why. Um, I finally decided today to rehouse my Orphanacus philippinus. This is Cheeto. There is Cheeto right there. This is the Philippine tangerine. You're not getting a very good view of her or him. That's a little bit better. It's a it's a very very excellent looking tarantula. The the color is so vibrant. Uh, it was in this this is Systema. Okay, so it's not even the size of you know a normal water bottle. But if you remember, it was filled up this high with substrate. It made a little den burrow about this far down. That was about it. And I don't didn't really see it all that often. So I decided to put it into a baseball cube. You can see all the dirt on my sheets. I need to wash my sheets. Anyway, um, I finally decided to go ahead and put it in here. So, uh, of course, I can't do the feeding video because I'm all by myself. I'm holding the camera. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the little dude in here. So what I'll do is we're going to put him in like so. Okay, We're going to take the lid off. There's a starter burrow right there and right there. So I'm hoping that if I just put them in like this and I take the top off and I put, I'll show you what else I have here. Oh, where'd I put it? Hold on. Oh, here it is. I use this, this piece of plexiglass that I made. Um, kind of hard to see it because it's clear, but uh, it, it's got a bunch of different holes in it. So I could put this over the top and then I can use the air hole here to poke through the vial. Hopefully Cheetah will go right into the burrow. Then I could slide this off to the side, pull the vial off, put the lid on and be done. So I'm going to do that now and uh, I'll be right back and show you maybe Cheetah will be out. Probably not, but uh, we'll find out. Um, these things are very quick. They're a Philippine, so they're a Philippine tarantula. They're, very, they're Asian, so they have a higher venom potency. But this one's a, a runner more than it is a standing fighter. Uh, didn't really want to go into vile at all, period, one bit. But uh, hopefully it'll come out. <laughs> it'll go down that burrow, and then in the next couple days we'll be able to see it. Um, just threw some leaf litter in there for ground cover. Uh, the side here, as you can see, it's pretty much almost all the way up to the vent holes with dirt. And then it slopes down here to give it a little plateau with the water. So I'm going to go ahead and try my best to get Cheeto out of there without him taking off or her taking off. Um, wish me luck. And we'll be right back either with an escaped tarantula or a recently new house tarantula. Okay, well, we survived. Cheeto is in its new enclosure. The, well, it, he, she, did not want to go. Um, it didn't want to come out of the vial. So what I ended up having to do is take the lid off, put the vial so that it was facing vertically up and down. You know, so kind of like this. And then poke down through to get the spider to come out. And that was a roughly 15 minute adventure trying to get it to actually I had it on the substrate three times and just as I started to pick up the vial it ran right back up inside so you know this is again a testament to tarantulas period when you rehouse them uh, and you transfer them into a cup that is now their haven because they're in there and they, nothing's happened to them so they're safe again um, so when you rip them out of their homes and you put them into a transfer container whether it's a catch cup or a cutoff Gatorade bottle or a pill vial like I use there, they tend to huddle inside there and feel safe. And then when you start poking them and pushing them, they're not safe anymore. And that's when they kind of fuss and they don't want to come out and they stay inside. So back. Um, so yeah, um, what a, what a outstanding looking tarantula. Looks like we're going to be okay. Like I said, I made it a starter den underneath there. There's also another one under there. We'll see what it does. 
on what Cheeto likes. Uh, hopefully, either Burrow would be fine with me. Uh, he could even use both as far as I'm concerned. They will web. Um, some web more than others. Mine hasn't webbed a lot. Uh, friends of mine have webbed pretty good. When Cheeto was a sling in a deli cup, 32-ounce deli cup it was in, uh, it webbed uh, a good portion of the ground area, kind of like a kilo brackies. So um, this last enclosure there, it just did a surface web and then it put substrate over top of it so you really couldn't tell that it actually webbed anything up. But um, it hasn't eaten in a while, so we'll probably try and feed it later. Um, I'm not going to feed it right off now because it was a pretty traumatic event for this one to get in there. If, if they, they go in easily, I'll, I'll feed them right away. If they don't go in easily and, and they fight, and I mean, he was... Or she was threat posturing inside the vial. She was snapping at the tong. So it's the most aggression I've seen out of her or him yet. But uh, good looking spider. Probably a little over the two and a half inch range right in that area. They have that long skinny abdomen. That's normal for that species. Um, Chelobrachys, the, the Orphanacus generally have that what we call pill shaped abdomen. So it's long and slender. Uh, so we'll try and, like I said, we'll try and get a feed into this one. Um, it molted not too long ago, and it hasn't eaten since it molted. So hopefully we'll get uh, get a cricket into it or a roach into it, and uh, we'll try and catch that on film. So I'm going to take some pictures. Uh, hopefully it won't bolt on me when I go to do that, and uh, we'll see everybody in the next video. Okay, so we got a cricket on board. Let's see if Cheeto has any interest at all. Um, I'm doubting that it will. Um, we really haven't moved much since I got it in here. It hasn't tried to really, hasn't really done much of anything. Just kind of sat there. It's probably in shock. Uh, but it'll get used to this. This is a combination of the uh, Nature's Choice organic topsoil or peat, not topsoil, potting soil. And um, those are like those white things. They're not fertilizer, like moisture balls or whatever they are. They're, they're not harmful to your tarantula whatsoever. And then there's cocoa fiber mixed inside there too. And this is the mini football helmet cube from Hobby Lobby. Um, there's five vent holes on each end here, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the long sides. Uh, they do like it a bit damper, uh, being from the Philippines, um, and they tend to like it a little bit warmer. Um, so if you have that ability to, you know, warm your tarantulas up, see, I don't, I don't do it with mine. They just kind of get whatever the ambient temperature is. And it'll slow down their molting and their feeding in the winter because it does get relatively cold here. Um, you know, and that when my wife uh, goes to work during the day, she'll turn the thermostat down to 60, 65, 67 degrees. So, um, but I do have a forced air space heater, just a small one, you know, the $12 or whatever one I bought at Walmart that I use in here at night. Um, because, of course, you know, in, in my neck of the woods, it gets relatively cold here. And uh, that space heater helps keep the corner warm. Um, it's not blowing directly on any of them. It, it is about eight feet away. And the air just kind of circulates in this general corner to keep them somewhat warm overnight. Um, and that's to keep them in the, you know, high 60s to low 70s is about the temperature that that corner will stay when I use that forced air heater so doesn't look like Cheeto is going to eat today so we'll probably end up just yanking that cricket here if we don't get a strike before the end of the night um, if we do I'm gonna leave him or her on my little table here um, so if I do see any kind of Movement towards the cricket or whatever, I'll try and catch it on film. I may not actually catch the strike, but at least we'll be able to see him eating. Um, I do have some footage of a few other tarantulas, uh, the Pamphibetes platyoma, the Ephopopus marinus, and um, 
uh, Nandu, Colorado Velosis. I'm going to condense those down and edit out the parts that they're not doing anything. Just catch the quick feeds and start those as the next uh, quick hits video. So we'll be filming some feedings because there are some more that do need to catch up on some eating. Um, a few that have molted and need to be fed again, like the Salmopeus cambridgei, the Kilobrachus huhini, um, and some of the recent transfers that I moved. Um, I'm going to try and get them fed in their new enclosures, like uh, Arkham here. Arkham's doing pretty well. We're webbing up quite a bit in this area. We're kind of using this area right here as our go-to, and then we climb up on top of the wood. Um, this one here uh, is in Premolt, and it actually, I didn't realize it. It's hard to see because it webbed. I'm really digging this tarantula, to be honest with you. Um, this is the Ornithoctone species Laos. You really can't see it. So once once we get a molt out of this one, I'm going to put it into a uh, softball cube and then set it up arboreal and then give it a, you know substrate to, to dig in then too so that we'll have a little bit of... Because if it does web up in one area, we'll at least be able to see it someplace else. These... These vials, they tend to web all the way around it, and then it kind of milks the, you know, the, the way that the enclosure is, so you really can't see inside of it, actually look and see what the tarantula looks like. So, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll wait till that one molts and gets a, 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 one more size bigger, and we'll move that one, and then there's the Salmopeus irmenia. Um, this little one will go into one of those, because now that I have this available this is a little bit more roomy it's the same size height as those but a little bit more roomy so we'll probably end up moving um, one of the Salmopeus reduncus possibly into this I have to see which one of those other than the two pokies are in there uh, which one's the biggest we'll, we'll move into this probably Tesla um, which is one of the female Salmopeus reduncus we'll get set up in this and then the um, what, did I, what did I want to move? I wanted to move the Armenia out of there, but I forgot what I wanted to move the Armenia into. Hmm. What did I want to move it into? I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. There was something I wanted to move the Armenia into out of that one. Oh, I know. That thing. Over there. The thing like that. That's who I decided to move into that, the Armenia. Um, I'm going to let the Suratoma molt one more time, and then we're going to put it into something acrylic, um, a little bit bigger, a little bit more room than just that square. Uh, the Armenia is still kind of small, so so that's that. Um, I don't. I'm going to up just upload just this video tonight. Um, I get some more pictures of Cheeto. Hopefully we can get it to move and get it to feed. And I also fed the uh, Damon Diadema this morning. Um, I didn't talk in that video. It was just strictly me videoing it. And then I got the attack. And then I did a second clip of it actually eating with a close-up view. So it looks it looks pretty cool. The footage is, is good. So look forward to that being in a, uh, in a video upcoming soon. And... Uh, I don't know, maybe Dave's got to watch this, but Dave, I'm really ecstatic about you coming back. Um, look me up, maybe we could do something together for your big kickoff video or something. Uh, that would be kind of cool to get to get a handful of us, people that, that, that were pretty big followers of you, that have kind of did some of this because of you, um, get together and do something together, that would be kind of cool. So I'll, I'll give Dave, I'll send Dave a message and see what... Uh, what he's got planned, maybe we could come up with something between him and uh, I know he's good friends with um, Spider-Man over in England and um, all of us. I mean, Dave Dave is a very, very active. He was on everybody's posts, on everybody's videos. He was very, very into it. Uh, needed some time for some personal stuff. He's been away for four months or so and now he's coming back in November and I'm really, really looking forward to that. So... Oh, and another good thing, um, I secured a new communal. They'll be here 
Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Um, they will fit in one of these softball containers. We're going to get that set up. I'm not going to tell you what they are as of now. We'll let you wait till that point in time. Uh, there's going to be six of them. So I'm looking forward to that. Having, having that second communal is going to be really, really cool. Um, something I've wanted to do with, with this species for a while. And never really got the opportunity till now. And it was just a, it was a deal that I really, really couldn't pass up. It's something I've wanted to do, so I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and do it. And uh, so we'll be able to show you guys that next week, or next weekend anyway. Uh, I'll let you know when they come in, and um, we'll do a, a semi-unboxing video. I'll probably have them already taken out of the box before I get home anyway. I always do. But uh, at least you'll be able to see what they are, and then we'll try and do... I will attempt to try and do a rehouse video out of the vials into the containers, um, but I do want to make sure that they're all live first. Um, I, I've known a handful of people that have done some live unboxing videos and, you know, removing tarantulas or other bugs out of um, vials and they end up being dead and they did it live and it it's just not really, really cool. So, you know, because you just don't know. I mean, you could pack them perfectly and you just don't know what happens um, on that trip to wherever they're going. Uh, my female Neoholophile Ensei molted. Uh, she's already mature, so this is just, uh, I've been waiting for this molt for quite a while, too. She was really, really holding back on this one. Um, two tarantulas that aren't doing really well. Um, let me bring, I'm hoping I got this one doing better. Um, I found it wasn't really acting really well there there it is oh he looks much better now this is the uh, holotheli sanguine sepis um i keep this one somewhat damp on one side and it's generally in the back part of my top shelf and i think i missed a watering with this one um, and this one does seem to be a little bit water dependent more than some of the other ones but anyway he was kind of curled and over the course of the last two and a half days um, I've been slowly, let's take the lid off, slowly, oh yeah, it's moving much better, yeah, moving much better, slowly, 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 um, rehydrating him, um, I had to move him to the dish, which he went right there, I have a picture on Instagram of him, I think I put it on Instagram, if not, I'll, I'll upload it to Instagram, um, picture of him drinking out of here but he kept curling back up kept curling back up kept curling back up so I doused the enclosure I mean I just soaked this whole entire one side I soaked all of that and you can see now no more curl he's moving or she's moving much better uh, now hopefully we can get this one to eat um, I've watched videos on these and I know a few other people have had them and all theirs webbed up like crazy like a Neoholothella ensei, you know, webbed up a bunch of stuff. As you can see, there is absolutely zero webbing in here. So that one's not doing, it's doing better than it was yesterday. Let's put it that way. Actually, even better than it was this morning. This is the other one. I got to do this quick because we're running out of time. This is my Terranochelis cordatus, one of my favorite spiders. I found it this morning up on top here half flipped over, its legs were flailing all over the place, then it flipped over, and then before I went to work, it flipped back over, and it walked over to here and flipped back over, its legs were going nuts all over the place, and it walked down here, and this is where I found it when I came home from work, so she's still okay right now, um, she's do a molt bad, I just don't know if there's anything else wrong with her. She hasn't eaten in quite a while, but that's normal for her when she's in pre-molt. She takes way, uh, she fasts for a long time. For, for a, a African species, she takes her time before she actually does eat. Um, well, I mean, prior to molting, she'll, she'll take a good, I think she's on like 64, 65 days uh, without eating. So she's a good looking spider bee. And, and her abdomen was kind of hanging to the one side. I thought for sure when I got home from work today she would be molted, but she's not. So I got to keep an eye on her. You know, we refilled the water dish, make sure she's got water, cleaned it all out. 
Uh, we'll see what she does. Um, the cordatas seem to like water on their uh, webbing a little bit more, and that's what I did this morning is I poured a bunch of water on here, and then you can see where she is now. So, Okay, well, again, thanks for watching, um, and uh, we'll keep updates on her, and we'll keep updates on the Holothelli sanguinicepis, and uh, look forward to some prior earth videos coming up soon, uh, a couple feedings, and some quick hits, and then the communal unboxing next week. See you guys later.